Well, praise the Lord Jesus. This is Pamela Ray with Hope for Today, friends. Here, starting from the pinnacle across from the visitor center here in beautiful Logan Pass. Friends, look at all that layers of strata, the red rock, the gray rock, the brown rock, and the fine, fine and tiny lines. Each one of those represents a different era of strata that fell to the bottom of America's ancient inland ocean. Each one of them represents a different layer of various things that fell and settled to the bottom. This whole area used to all be under the water. Isn't that amazing, friends? Under the ocean. The ocean would be way on top of all of this. But the glaciers came in and God's earth changes constantly. It's a living creation. And uh, the glaciers came and wore down all these rocks, uh, removing all this scree and rocks so that you can actually see the many different layers here of strata and the side. Look at all that strata, friends. Brown lines, black lines. Uh, I've actually gotten up right here at the visitor center where some of this has been uncovered the strata and reached over and pulled out a little thin section of rock that had never seen the sunshine for potentially, who knows how long, the time it was formed countless eons ago under the ocean and for the first time it was seen by human eyes and the first time it was exposed to sunlight. Amazing, God's creation is just so incredible. I praise God that he created all of this beautiful creation for his glory. Praise the name of Jesus Christ, name above every other name. And friends, over here to the right is the beautiful visitor center here at Logan Pass, where they have wonderful displays in there, wonderful uh, animal and nature displays and great uh, products. This is a wonderful place to bring your children and your families, friends, to beautiful Glacier National Park, the crown of the continent. And look at these beautiful trees here, friends, to my right. Do you want to know what makes these trees so very special? All of these trees way up here at over 6,000 feet high with eight month long winters and snow that reaches 100 feet in depth. These trees have all been stunted by the cold and brutal winters and the terrible wind, 90 mile an hour winds up here. And some of these trees are just amazing that they're even alive. Look at the winds. Winter after winter has stunted this tree and yet amazingly it is still alive. I couldn't have survived up here for one winter, not even one month in the winter, but this is why some of its branches, the wind blowing, blew much of this foliage off these trees. These are true survivor trees here, and they are all, it's like being in a little miniature forest. It's so cute, like a little fairy tale land, as it were, a, fant a, a fantasy land of darling little dwarf trees, miniature trees that never could reach their full potential. Down in the valley where I just came from, they are many, many, many feet higher and fuller, but up here, the cold and brutal wind and air and snow dwarf these trees. We have many stunted trees up here, but it's a fascinating little forest of stunted trees, and I love it. I love to walk up here and look at these darling trees that are so courageous and survived these brutal winters every uh, year at this high elevation. Now, over there is also a, a lovely cluster of these trees right there. They normally grow many times taller, but that's what the brutal cold and the wind does every winter to these lovely and delightful trees. But it makes them kind of like a bonsai, a Japanese bonsai tree. I love pine trees. From the time I grew up in Germany as a small child, I was taken many times to the Black Forest and the beautiful Bavarian Alps of Germany and the beautiful mountains, so similar to these mountains here. I went up to Jogspitze, the highest mountain in the Bavarian Alps of Germany, and I loved Garmisch Partenkirchen, beautiful, beautiful, lovely, quaint German town surrounded with these beautiful Bavarian Alps, and that's where I first fell in love with pine trees and pine cones as a child walking through the beautiful German Alps, uh, the Bavarian Alps of Germany. I never forgot that experience. I loved the smell of pine trees. I loved the beautiful pine cones. I loved everything green and coniferous, and to this day, at the age of 62, I am still in love with God's beautiful creation, his lovely coniferous trees. Now look, here's another stunted dwarf tree. He'll never reach his full height, and look what the wind has done to strip him of foliage at uh, lower sections of him. That's what the brutal wind does here in Glacier National Park to these poor trees. Oh, what they go through to survive. But you know, the Lord spoke to me one day as I was admiring the, the stamina 
of these trees to survive such brutal cold temperatures and deep snow and prolonged winters of eight months. And the Lord spoke to me about the verse the Bible says that the person who meditates on the word of God shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, uh, roots sunk deep into the ground that will stand, it will endure, it will make it. And these trees have learned the art of making it under brutal, harsh conditions. And God reminded me that some of us as Christians have been through, some of us have been through worse events in our lives than others. But if our roots are planted deep in the ground of the Word of God and faith and courage, God knows how to let us endure and give us the grace to endure and survive and come out from every winter of harsh attack, as it were, every harsh experience we may go through, and many of you have been through harsh experiences in your lives, to victory, victory, victory. These precious trees are just soaking up the sunshine and the heat and the rain. It's such a welcome change from eight months of cold, brutal winter up here in Glacier National Park at Logan Pass. Lovely Logan Pass and the Continental Divide is near here as well. So I love coming up here because I see so many lessons from the Word of God up here at Logan Pass and throughout Glacier National Park. In fact, any place that God has created is beautiful in its own way. And you can learn many, many, many wonderful lessons from uh, God's creation here. I love looking at these rocks and all that strata. Oh, the power of God and creation and what he did to bring forth the beauty we walk in today. Oh, my gracious. Absolutely stunning. And there's some more lodgepole pines over there. Lovely, lofty, pencil point uh, lodgepole pines. But they are much bigger down uh, on lower elevations. These poor things have been stunted from the horrible cold winter up here. But they're so beautiful. So sweet. I love them. God's creation is truly wonderful. So friends, I just thought I'd bring you up here for a brief visit here behind the visitor center to look at these beautiful mountains. And here's some snow from recent snowfall, would you believe, in August. Usually it doesn't hit quite so early. And here's another grove of stunted little trees here because of the extreme cold throughout the winter. And in the summer and spring you see beautiful flowers that of course are never here during the brutal winter we have here in this area. Praise God for this beautiful day. Let's see what else we have here. I want to get down to some of the lovely flowers that we have. When you drive on, oh, by the way, I got here by traveling on going to the Sun Road, that f famous, iconic, right here, nostalgic. Come this way. Oh, my friend Sylvia saying, Pam, come this way. <laughs> I better follow her instructions. She said she had a beautiful path to lead me on, so I'm going to follow her directions, friends. Here, let's see what we have. Oh, how beautiful this is up here. For those of you who are shut in or live in the vast regions of suburbia, USA, I hope you enjoy this lovely, lovely scenery. Let me see if I can capture some of the beautiful purple flowers that line all of going to the Sun Road. So beautiful. To come up here, oh, look at those lovely flowers. I'm going to have to find out what they are called. But they are beautiful. All the way up here, we have orange flowers, yellow sometimes something called bear grass which is very beautiful too so beautiful great is the lord and greatly to be praised and his creation shows forth his praises every single day glory be to god okay friends yeah let's see what we have this lovely shaded path here it's hard for me to see the screen here with all of this sunshine so bright up here there we go. Now we have another view of the surrounding mountains around the visitor's center here at Logan Pass. So beautiful. More of our cute little stunted trees here, twisted, gnarled, and stunted from the very cold, cold winter. Lovely scenery. And here's another beautiful mountain in the distance. 
There we go. Praise the Lord God. Hallelujah. Special greetings out there to the Curtis family of Tennessee. Thank you for your recent letter. God bless you all. You'll never know how much I needed that because of a crisis a friend was in that was actually life-threatening and God used me to help literally save that person's life in a very serious uh, crisis they were going through health-wise. Praise God. And it was not, it's never cheap to help people when there's medical problems and they just don't have the money to cover it. So the Lord used me to step in and thank God for supporters like the Curtis family who literally were part of being able to save this person's life literally. I can't exaggerate. Praise the Lord God. Thank you, Patrick Colapret, for your wonderful love, prayers, and support. God bless you. May your home sell as you requested me to pray for it. God bless all of you. Johan Helmansberger there in Anaheim, California. You are so loved and so appreciated. You'll never know. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Praise God. Oh, look at that cute little grove there again of cute little bonsai type trees that are normally much higher than that, but this is the way they grow here, including this lovely one right here. Thank you so much, Johan. God bless you, Monica in California. May the Lord heal you in Jesus' mighty name. God bless you, uh, June Ware there in Tennessee and your wonderful husband. God bless your work. God bless you, Denise. I can't pronounce your Italian last name there in Long Island. God bless you, dear Denise. The Lord be with you. Praise God for our communications and thank you so much for helping this ministry to move forward because there's so much more I need to do for the Lord. I want to continue to reach out on the Native American reservations, but friend, I'll tell you the truth. There's so much more I want to do for the Lord in this state and it cannot be done without financial support from people like you. It is impossible. Bibles are expensive. Food is expensive. Winter clothing, brand new, to give out on the reservations to people that are very cold. Children that often go to school hungry and cold, as one youth pastor with the Native American children admitted to me, they are in the Blackfeet Reservation in Browning, Montana. My heart bleeds. My heart breaks for what I know, but I said, Lord, how many times have I wept before the Lord? I said, Father, I so want to help. I want to continue to be able to give clothing and food like I brought Thanksgiving dinners in the past. Turkeys and pumpkin pies and beautiful new clothing from Costco. Great prices for winter clothing for teens and children. Wonder Bibles, oh yes, uh, discounted christianbooks.com. But I cannot do it, friends, without your support. And I thank you so much for caring enough in the wonderful name of Jesus to help me do these things for the glory of God and the furtherance of the gospel. Can't do it without your love and support and financial support and prayers. A single Christian woman in ministry with no surviving family members, no husband to hold me up, no children to support me, nothing. And all I get is about $260 a month SSI because my whole life has been years of Christian outreach for which no social security income has ever put aside. So I do need your love and your prayers so I can reach more people here in Montana, on the reservations, the children, the youth before cold and prolonged brutal winter comes of eight months. And when the youth pastor I talked to, he said, yes, Pam, some of the children go to bed hungry at night on the reservations. Some of the children go to school cold during the winter. God help me if I could ever be indifferent to this kind of need when these people are just a few hours away. And I know that we are called as a body of Christ to love one another, to care, to show his love in practical ways, not by just saying, oh, God bless you, Jesus loves you, and I'll pray for you and walk away and do nothing. Is that representing Jesus Christ properly? I can't do that. God forbid that I should ever do that and not try to do something, anything, to show his love in practical ways with food and clothing and even financial help at times. So friends, your support is needed. No true quality ministry that's constantly giving as I've been striving to do can survive without the body of Christ standing in solidarity. So if God lays that in your heart, friends, I'll leave ways that you can support this ministry in the comments section, but I'm not ashamed nor afraid to ask for support because truly I'm doing the work of God that has truly made a difference in people's lives but where the finances aren't there, friends. I can't do anything. I can't give away Bibles. I can't provide food and clothing. I cannot even travel without money for gas. So your love, your prayers, your support means a lot to me at this time. It means a lot to the children I want to help and the families and uh, very special people on the reservations there that are very impoverished and very much need our love and our care, our Christian giving and sharing. Praise God. I just had to photograph these lovely little dwarfed, twisted, gnarled trees here. They're so beautiful. But what a testimony, a testament to the greatness of God who created power in these trees to survive these extreme brutal temperatures and wind chills and 
wind blowing. It's amazing what God's creation has been enabled to do by his great and mighty power. Praise his holy name, both now and forevermore. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Praise God. Anyhow, this is Pamela Ray with Hope for Today. I'm going to get some more views for you, my wonderful viewers, uh, here at beautiful Glacier National Park. It's starting to turn fall. The leaves are starting to turn color. And yes, we still have snow on higher elevations, but we're going to be getting a lot more soon in the future. So this is Pamela Ray with this brief short here. God bless you. Jesus loves you. Keep me in your prayers, friends. I'm up against a lot in these spiritual battlefields and practical battlefields. I desperately do need your love, your help, your support at such a time as this to reach many, many more for the gospel of Jesus Christ in this nuclear doomsday state of Montana, which unfortunately, as military analysts have admitted, when uh, attack comes to America, and they said it's inevitable, it will come, this will be one of the first states to go up in smoke and flames from Russia and China and nuclear attack, preemptive strikes to destroy utterly all of our underground underground missile silos that are scattered across the state. Military analysts said that it, this state will be rendered uninhabitable when that happens and very few people will be left alive. But I'm struggling now to reach as many people in Montana as I can before the nukes come from Russia and China to destroy the missile fields across the state, which will destroy the state. It will not be able to be inhabited nor be a productive agriculture state any longer. And as it said in the article I read online, most people in Montana will die. And how many of them will die without Christ, including on the reservations? Many of these missile silos are located directly on their Indian reservations, all seven reservations, 12 tribes. Their reservations are located by these missile silos. What do you think will happen to the Native Americans when Russia and China attack America? And they target our missile silos, and all these Native Americans' reservations are where the silos are. They will die. It's an extinction event for many Native Americans, the most of whom do not know Jesus Christ as Savior. By one Native American Blackfoot pastor's admission, he said only about 2% of all Native Americans across Canada and America are truly born-again Christians. What will happen to them? My heart has broken, and I have wept over this many times. I cried out, God, give me the grace, give me the grace, give me the funds, the tools, the materials to print up more literature, to get Bibles there, to bring your love into food and clothing and then the word of God to reach these people for Christ before it is too late because once the nukes come to hit America and as one military source said from Kirkland Air Force Base down in New Mexico who was interviewed he said it's not a matter of if but when there will be nuclear strikes on American soil because of America's foreign policies in the Middle East and other locations like Ukraine right now he said that's why the US military has been stockpiling up to 10 years worth of emergency food supplies in the deep underground military bases across America in full anticipation of a prolonged nuclear exchange. How do you think I feel, friends, when I realize after looking at a map and seeing that all these underground missile silos are there on these seven Indian reservations? They're going to die. When those things come, there is no second chance, and many will die in sin and go to hell if we do not reach them now. I don't care if I die because I'm saved, but they are not. Many of them are not, and my heart is broken for the people, the elderly, the children, the families. And I said, God, I've got the vision. I understand. I've got the truth. I see what's coming. The Holy Spirit has borne witness that these things are closer than what we think. But Lord, I don't have the funds. God, move on the hearts of your people who are blessed financially, Father. Move on their hearts to be burdened for what the heart of God is burdened for, these precious lost souls who are facing an extinction event in the state of Montana and Wyoming, too, the Wind River Reservation. They also have uh, America's underground missile silos set up for defense of America in Wyoming and North Dakota. There are many Indian reservations. And uh, Standing Rock Reservation, I believe, is there in uh, North Dakota. They will die. They will perish. They will go to hell if we don't reach them now for Christ. And that's the high calling that God has given every one of us in this country and throughout the world is to reach the lost for Christ before it is too late. And these famed yet perilous end time generation Friends, help me to do the work of God. Oh, the tears I have shed in silence. Uh, the world has never seen them. I'm alone, shut away in my prayer closet, weeping over these things and saying, Lord, where are the ties? Where is the support? Where is the compassion for the lost from your people? 
I desperately need support at this time, friends, and I'm asking you to consider praying about and supporting this ministry. I will leave uh, my address and ways to support the ministry below in the comments section, but none of this is for me. I am burdened for that which God is burdened for, eternal souls that will be lost should these events happen and they are not reached for Christ. So anyhow, friends, make sure you subscribe and hit the like button. This is Pamela Ray with Hope for Today here at beautiful Logan Pass here at lovely Glacier National Park, the crown of the continent, making this video to bless you all. And God bless you all out there. Praise God for all of you. And thank you so much, friends, for everything, your love, your support. And my friend down there in uh, Arizona, several friends, God bless you in Jesus' name. And I will see you, friends, later at another location to do some other wonderful filming here at lovely Glacier National Park. Be blessed and lifted up to the mountaintops with God through Jesus Christ. This is Pamela Ray. Goodbye for now. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.